So for today's video, Jamie has this old dresser that she got picking and she's going to try and see if she can teach me how to blend the gray with milk paint. All right, so we didn't have any gray on hand, but I did have flower sack and I had lantern. So I'm making my own gray today. I used about six parts flower sack to one part lantern, if I had to guess. I'm gonna mix it up with my immersion blender and then the water to milk paint ratio is one part milk paint to one part water. I always like to use warm water because I feel like it mixes a little bit better. I think that that's a little bit lighter than I wanted, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more lantern. Breaking all the rules. Yeah. You could totally use sweet pickings and zinc if that's what you have. Um, and I'm not gonna be using any extra bond today because I'm hoping that it gets super chippy. So we're gonna get the base coat on here. We're using our paint pixie brushes and my crusty old milk paint glass. It works good. Eventually I'll have to throw it out. And we're just gonna put a coat on here. Hopefully I made it the right thickness. It looks pretty good. If you watched our sanding video, you know all about why we leave the drawers in. Part lazy and part because it's easier. This is just the base coat and then we'll come back and blend some more. I'm hoping this is old and dry enough. Yeah, we didn't add any bond, but sometimes when, because we're gonna be using water to blend it, and sometimes when you get the bond wet, it gets super chippy. So I think this is our better option. Yeah, we'll get enough coats on here. It'll be all right. One thing to remember when you're doing a blended finish like we are, I'm not worried about 100% coverage because I'm gonna come back in and add extra colors anyways, so. It's not 100% perfect, that's okay. Well, actually, I wouldn't say colors because we're doing all gray, so. Shades. Gray, gray's a shade. I would argue that it's a color, but you know, who am I? I, well, sometimes, I don't know. Sometimes gray <laughs> pulls blue. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind when you're painting knobs like this where they're on is come back underneath it and get any drips that happen so you don't got drips. So you don't got drips, so you don't have drips. So now we're making our lighter gray to blend in because we're gonna be doing tone on tone blending. I've got a fourth a cup of milk paint here and I'm just, and really it's a grand experiment. I do it different every time, but I'm also gonna add a fourth a cup of water in here. I'm gonna mix that up with my immersion blender and then we're gonna go ahead and get ready for the second color. Okay, so we didn't add any extra bond and you can already see it's it's starting to chip off hey, here. Don't do that. It's all right, we're gonna put more color back on. Don't be scared. You just said it was a grand adventure. We're going to be blending. So Zeb, can you squirt this piece down? Don't like hose it down. Just, I'm squirting the whole piece? Yeah, just squirt the whole piece. Well, yeah. here, I'll show you. It does. Uh, it's not, oh, there we go. There you go. Get it, get it, kind of reactivate that paint a little bit. If this had bond in it and you reactivate the paint like this, it gets super chippy. All right, that's good. Okay. Okay, so we're just gonna take our lighter color. We didn't wash our brushes and I'm just gonna come in and just add extra lighter gray. Are we framing it in? Like leaving know, the centers? No, I'm just kind of going where I want to with it. Okay. All right, can I have that squirt bottle back? Maybe. Maybe. All right. And I'm just kind of blending it in. I'm getting a fun yellow bleed through color. <laughs> We're gonna call that uh, patina. It's patina. patina. It reactivated the little flakiness. Okay, make sure that we got strokes all the way across. Can I borrow that real quick? Just real oh, quick. Yeah, yeah. I liked how they were meeting in the middle though, you know? All right, that's good. Let's do this bottom part. Hold on, I don't like this one here. The heck is coming out of this dresser? I told you, we're getting some fun yellowish stains coming out. That's what happens with old furniture that's lived a long life. Oh, I forgot this hole. So are we going for more of like a, I, I know like 
in your other boho style pieces, you usually frame them out. Are we just going for more of a blended, little bit of tone variation, darker, lighter, coming through kind of thing? Going That's on? it, that one right there. All right. Make sure you get your feet a little bit. What if I wanted my feet to be darker gray? Okay. Now, do you want some of the drippiness? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it's not, it's going to be kind of subtle once it dries. And we're going to white wax it. All right, that looks pretty good. Oh, we are white waxing. We're just stressing it later, right? Yeah. Oh, well, then it'll all go away. It'll all go. All the bad brush strokes. Hold on, stop. All right, that looks pretty good. We're gonna leave that alone. Let's do the top. All right, you don't have to get the whole thing painted. I'm not, I'm just gonna use the paint we've got and kind of even the brush strokes yeah. out so it looks like it was maybe not intentional. <laughs> The squirt bottle is just water, in case I didn't tell you. No, it's got a ton of variation. Look at that. Look at it. Look at it. It's just beautiful. All right, so we've got varying tones of gray as the colors mix together. And we've also got a little bit of drippiness, but it's kind of subtle because it's tone on tone. And then once we add the white wax, it'll soften it right up. The top is good. We've got a little wet. We do have some bubbling because this dresser is super old, so hopefully that doesn't present a problem later. It's gonna be super chippy, I think. <laughs> I think so too. My brush is dragging a little, so. I make weird faces while I paint. Yeah, you do. <laughs> You're so focused. Okay, that's good. Like You're very that. Intense. Like, don't, don't add any more. Don't put too much. Because otherwise. Okay, she's gonna make it run. Yeah, I'm just kind of hosing it down. Look at that good patina in there. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise known as bleed through. All right, so that we're just gonna let that go and do its own thing. Um, and then once it's dry, we're gonna come back and distress it, and then we'll white wax it. Cool. All right, so the next step is I'm gonna be taking the orbital sander with some 220 sandpaper. I'm gonna sand it all smooth, remove all the chipping, and then we'll be ready for white wax and clear wax. This sandpaper's been used a little bit, which is perfect. This is really chippy, so we just wanna remove what's loose. And I get asked this question all the time. If it's chippy, you can't like make it stick. Whatever's gonna chip is gonna chip. You gotta get it off of there before you seal it. So another trick that I like to do, especially when it's super chippy, I've got my nozzle on my air hose and I'm just gonna blow off anything that I missed while I was sanding. Good news, bad news. Good news is super chippy, which is something I absolutely love. Bad news, you can't really see the paint blending on the base of the dresser. The top you can, so you can see those color variations on there, but we lost most of the blending on the front to chipping, but that's okay. It looks really awesome. And I'm gonna bring out even more of the chipping using white wax. So I've got DIY white wax, and I'm just gonna come frame out all the drawers and then I'll smooth it back in with my clear wax. So now I'm gonna come back in with my clear wax and I'm just gonna blend it in. So I did not wait for the white wax to dry at all. I just went right over the top with the clear wax and I'm gonna go ahead and buff it off before it sets and then I'm gonna wait a few hours, put on one more coat of clear wax, then I will wait overnight, and then buff it in the morning. That way it's nice and sealed. 
So the sides and the top, I did the same thing. I framed out the piece with the white wax, and now I'm coming back in with clear wax and just blending it in. So I've just got a lint-free microfiber towel, and this is not dry yet where Jamie blended it. I'm just coming in right after she got done and I'm just gonna wipe off kind of the excess wax. And then once that dries, we'll give it a couple hours to dry. Usually you wanna wait overnight before you buff, but we'll give it a couple hours before it dries. And then I'm gonna put another clear wax over the top. I'm just trying to wipe off all the extra wax so that there's no brush strokes from when Jamie had a lot of wax going on here with the two different waxes back to back. She kind of got a few brush strokes and I'm eliminating all of those right now before it hardens. So what this is also doing, it's wiping a lot of the white wax up off, but it's leaving it in all of the imperfections and the cracks and the grain of the wood. It turned out pretty chippy. You can't really, you can see some of the paint blending. <laughs> Mostly on the top though, and Zeb's gonna get you some really great pictures of the top, so that way you can see the variation in paint color. But it's a good lesson in that milk paint does what it wants. And I knew, right, like if I didn't add the extra bond, that it could get super chippy. Well, and had we added the extra bond up front, it may have been even worse, like it might have just sheeted off, so. Yeah. Who knows? Because when you spray, milk paint that's been painted with extra bond it gets a chippy but that is a good thing to know if you're using milk paint and it's not chippy enough try doing a wet distress over your milk paint and that could make it more chippy but just beware it could get really chippy proof that not everything we do turns out exactly how we want it we were going for a blended looking finish we used milk paint knowing it might chip we got some amazing chipping and kind of toned it back with the white wax a little bit well, and the blending's on the top. Right? Yeah, you can see it on the top for sure, so. All right, so here's the list of products that we used. We used Sweet Pickens Milk Paint and Flower Sack and Lantern to make some varying shades of gray. If you've already got some gray on hand from Sweet Pickens, you could use that as well as just add some Flower Sack to lighten it up to give yourself a few different shades. Um, and then we also used DIY White Wax, DIY Clear Wax, and of course, our Paint Pixie brushes. To buy the paint and products we use today, go to jamierayvintage.com. So if you guys like this video, it really helps us out a lot if you could share it. Tell all your friends how awesome it is if you loved it. Or <laughs> how moderately okay it is, but just, you know, whatever, whatever you feel like or, or be like, look, these guys painted this furniture and it totally <laughs> failed. It doesn't look like anything good at all. You know, share it. Share it out there. It helps us out. All right, guys, be sure to hit that notifications button so you don't miss any of our videos, especially our lives on Saturday night. If you want, you can also hit see all, right? Yeah. So if you hit see all, you should get all the notifications. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.